I'm Audrey Rust. I'm the president of POST. I've been in the job for 23 years. I've never seen anything like this current circumstance. And um, actually, since I've been in the job 23 years, in some weird way, I find it intellectually interesting. <laughs> I guess you always need a new challenge. <laughs> I want to say that in this time, during this recession, I think it is very important that we focus outward. I'm here to talk a little bit about our relationship with donors and, and what we do about that part of our work at this time. To me, the word is focus first and outward second. We must do both those things. It's very important that we focus on those people, not on all the anxiety and distress we're having here. Now, some percentage of your time you need to do that, but really the hard thing is to focus outward and we need to do that. I want to talk about this is the time for relationship strengthening. I want to talk uh, briefly about some activities that you could engage in and the tools that you might want to be thinking about. So, first, it is the time for relationship strengthening. That is the key thing that you need to do. You need to be paying attention to what are your audiences, and you need to focus on them. Now, you know, sometimes you think, well, we got to get everybody involved. Or, and there are times when you do that, but this is the time to focus. And I believe what you ought to be looking at is your top 50 donors. Really, who are they? Doesn't matter what group you are, the top 50 in terms of building and strengthening that relationship. And as Donna said, you need to know what they're thinking about. You have many different audiences. You have your public partners, your volunteers, board members. All of those are very important to you. I'm going to talk more about the donor aspect of this. And the next thing is planned giving, as you hear, is a theme here. It's important work to do, but it's not going to save your bottom line this year. However, past work could have. In fact, at Post, our past work in planned giving has saved us this year. And we're going to come out net ahead in cash in the door this year. But it's not because we could have counted on it. Our regular annual support that you can count on with renewals and whatnot is down 30%. So that planned giving work that we've been doing over the years, the benefits of it are really critical to us. If you're not doing planned giving work, you absolutely have to begin doing it. And it's something you can do to build and strengthen relationships, coming back to that theme. The next is that you need to have in that audience, you need to involve your board and volunteers more deeply. So you need to take care of them, but you need to ask them to be doing something for you. So I want to transition now to the next point about activities that you can engage in. First of all, I really think everybody should challenge themselves to setting a goal for being out of the office a certain percent of the time. And so I think it should be more than 25%. Don't get lost in the administrative stuff at this time. This is your time to be a leader in your community of donors. It's your time to bond with people, to find out what they're really thinking about. It's your time to get out there. I think that uh, if you're not spending time with your key donors, you're going to lose them to something else that's going to take their attention that seems more current and more urgent. Whereas our programs are current, they are urgent, they are important. They have relevant economic benefits to people. They have relevant social benefits. They have relevant spiritual and ethical benefits. And you have to remember those things. So it's also the time you should focus your message. So spend some time focusing that message, really being sure you're on target with your mission. And as you engage in activities, don't just engage in the next best creative idea. Make sure that activity is really focused on your audience and your mission. Ask yourself the hard questions. This is a time you can do that. Bring your staff together, your group of volunteers together. Talk about this. Really focus that. Uh, you've got great missions, but you need to focus them. Because we all do things that are not always as clearly on mission. I don't mean we all have mission drift. But some of the things that we do, we don't always tie back to the mission. We need to tie it back and we need to have those messages clearly defined. 
we need to establish a community presence, as people have said. Now, part of this, go out of the office, I'm not counting this as the 25%, by the way. The 25% is donor-focused. You need to get out and make a presentation to every civic group in your area. You need to have displays at the library. You need to do all of those things which really cost you time, but they don't cost you money. You need to be engaged in those things very seriously, and that's where your volunteers and board members can come into play. Train them, get them out there, get as much of your message out there as possible. And of course, being from the Silicon Valley, I want to transition to tools. What are one of the tools you use is, of course, electronic measures. Your website, YouTube, get somebody out there with a camera, get a YouTube video. You know, if they're funny, you can drive people, do a little viral marketing with it. Make sure you have and use your donors' emails. Keep focused on a positive message that is mission-centric. You do have a positive message. We have the investment that is working. You know, we are the groups that have the, the product that is not harming the earth, but in fact is supporting the earth. People are still concerned about global warming. They're still concerned about their quality of life. You need to be right into the middle of that message. And last, I want to say, you need to be focused enough to know what you want so that you can seize the opportunity. You really, if you're too involved in yourself in an anxious way rather than a forward-looking way, you're not going to see the opportunity that's right in front of you. And there are people who have money that they want to give away. There are public agencies that have money that they want to use in pursuit of parks and open space. There are landowners who want to save farmland. There are opportunities out there that you need to be able to see. Now, I know this is a little hokey, but I do it, and I really believe in it. I really believe in visualizing the outcome. I really do. I think if you can see what it is that you want, you're going to get it. And I think that's in part because you open yourself to the opportunity to have that come in the door. And so I think it's really important to do that. And I would challenge each of you to spend some of your time in the next day really making a list. What are the three things I want in my land trust? And really getting clear about those. Then you can focus your attention on your donors, find out what they want, and make that match. Then you can interact with your donors, your board members, and your volunteers, and make that match. Then you can engage in activities that may make it possible to bring the opportunity that, you, that is out there right into your lap. So I think we're set to do. You'll get more out of this conference, which will help you do that. And of course, we'll all be around to answer your questions. Thank you.